This video is about this graph put out by climate researcher and skeptic John Christie. It was never published and it is used extensively by people who reject the mainstream science on global warming and trying to point out that climate models are useless. The graph has even been used in congressional hearing in the US. The first time I saw this graph I was kind of surprised. Many sources show that climate models are fairly good at representing the climate system. The IPCC models have been showing a good agreement with measurements on surface temperature while being on the conservative side when looking at for instance sea level rise and sea ice melt. But this graph shows something else. Projections calculated by running 102 climate models seem to be completely out of base with the temperature observations, especially since 1995, with the models running much hotter than the observations. When looked at more closely, for instance by reading the congressional testimony of John Christie, I quickly found out that the comparison shown in this graph is not about surface temperatures, but about the mid-troposphere. As John Christie states, this is between 20,000 and 50,000 feet, or 6 to 15 kilometers. Not exactly the place where humans live, unless you have a house on Mount Everest. And the worst part about this is that usually it's not clearly explained when the graph is shown. But putting aside, but not forgetting that this is cherry-picked data, it is still amazing how huge the discrepancy is between the projections and the observations. This is something that also got the attention of NASA Goddard director Gavin Schmidt, and he decided to reproduce the figure with the same data, and came up with a completely different looking graph. When I saw this, I found it hard to believe you can make these two graphs with the same data, but it is possible. So, in this video, let's track down the steps taken by the two. Did John Christie really mislead the public with his graph? Spoiler alert, yes he did. Let's start with the model projections. Christie is using 102 model projections for the period of 1975 till 2025. Let's plot a mean line to see the average of these 102 projections. The first thing Christie did was a 5 year smoothing on his data. For these graphs that's not a big deal and he appears to have done it correctly but we will get back to smoothing later. Instead of smoothing, Schmidt decides to take the yearly averages, which is no problem since the graph will become tidier later on. Now comes an important step, aligning the data. For temperature anomalies, it is common practice to calculate them with respect to a defined reference period. This is done because we don't want one very warm or cold year to mess up the graph. Schmidt proposes to use a 1979 to 1988 period. We can then align all the graphs so that the average temperature for this period is zero for all graphs individually. Christie notes that he had a completely different approach. He takes the smooth data, calculates the trend line for each of the graphs, but only between 1979 and 2015, aligns them so they all go through zero at 1979, and then goes back to the smooth data. This does not make a whole lot of sense, and it is clear why I did it, because the effect is huge. We see that the value in 2015 is about 0.13 degrees higher on the right. Then the following. Christie decides it's better to group the models into 32 groups. Now it doesn't even seem to make sense how he grouped them, but it seems unfair to give less weight to certain model outcomes by putting them in a bigger group. The reason why he did it is clear. You can see that more models on the lower end disappear, and the mean temperature is again raised by a few percent. Now in this graph, Christie decides to lose the individual model projections and keep only the mean value. A lot of information is lost here, and he is going to compare this statistical mean value with observations, which is just fundamentally incorrect. It would seem a lot better to show a 95% model spread as done on the left, so we all know that the models have significant spreading. Let's add the observations. When we add them to the graph, we should align them the same as the model projections. So on the left they are aligned with the baseline period, and on the right to the remarkable Christie 1979 smooth trend alignment. But the smoothing of the observations is, as Schmidt found out, done wrong. An example, this data ranges from 1979 till 2015. Calculating a 5 year running mean gives a problem at the start and end of the curve because for instance after 2015 there are two values missing to calculate the 5 year mean value. 
Therefore, you could decide to drop these two last values. An alternative would be to estimate the values for 2016 and 2017. And Christie did just that. But he estimated the values of 2016 and 2017 to be the same as 2015, which of course is not realistic and as we know now, incorrect. 2016 was the warmest year recorded up to now. This all just shows how far he went to diverge the graphs as much as possible, and it is hard to believe that this is just an honest mistake. But the data goes up to 2015, and it does not make sense to compare observations to the model output for years following 2015. Christie does this anyway, and that makes a major visual difference. The next thing he does is combine all the satellite data to average values, again without showing the spread of the data. This hides the fact that satellite data has a large spread, certainly when compared to measurements with thermometers on the ground. Another big visual adjustment, Christie changes the y-axis limits so that the last tip of the model output that bends down a bit is not shown anymore and it seems that the graph is going straight up off the scale. Finally, for some fine adjustment, the starting point of the observations and models are chosen carefully so that it looks like they are aligned better. Okay, so I guess we can say that John Christie used every trick imaginable to mislead and to support his own conclusions. But what about the newer data? Satellite data has been adjusted upwards, as is common, and we have three more years of observations. We see that even in Christie's graph there is a major improvement. This already indicates that the measurements are responsible for a large part of any divergence. It is very difficult to measure temperature with a satellite, and ironically there is a lot of modeling involved to get a temperature reading. If Christie would make the graph again today, you can be sure he would come up with a new alignment, smoothing, etc. to make things look a lot worse. Now the conclusion that climate models in general are incorrect is of course ridiculous if you look at one specific data set. But even to say that the models are nowhere near the observations for this specific atmospheric layer is false. On the left here, the model outcomes are plotted together with the observational data. And yeah, it's not so easy to tell where they are, is it? Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any comments or corrections.